In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, and bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip. the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of Hello and welcome to the Celebration of Life worship service for Dorothy Owl. It is a blessing to be with you and to join you in a time where we can celebrate Dorothy's life. And I want to remind you that as we celebrate her life today, all different emotions will surface for us. We'll be grateful for Dorothy and we'll have emotions of joy and happiness. And we'll also be sad, sad and as we miss her and we might have feelings of grief. We'll probably laugh and we'll cry as we experience this service together. And all those emotions are really important. So may this be a time where the Holy Spirit comes and comforts you and encourages you as we remember Dorothy together. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for Dorothy Al, for her life of compassion and kindness to others, We thank you that we can celebrate her today and remember her and honor you, God, and worship you as we remember Dorothy. Bless this service. Holy Spirit, come and bring comfort to all who participate in this service today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. John 14, 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. 
believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Dorothy Nanako Yoshitomi was born in Milwaukee, Oregon on July 7, 1931 to Keijiro and Shimo Yoshitomi, the fifth of six children. Keijiro and Shimo immigrated to the United States in 1922, partnering with their cousins in farming. The Yoshitomis were among Japanese Americans interned during World War II, and their family was sent to Minidoka, Idaho when Dorothy was in junior high. When the war ended, Dorothy's family returned to Milwaukee. Upon graduating Milwaukee High School, Dorothy went to Oregon State University and the University of Oregon School of Nursing, now OHSU, in Portland, Oregon. After graduating, she lived with nursing classmates who remained lifelong friends. At the wedding of a mutual friend, she became reacquainted with Hawk and Al, whom she had met at Oregon State. On their first date, he took her to the Chart House, which had a view of the Willamette Valley and Mount Hood. Hawkins started calling more frequently and became the guy who would take all the nurses skiing at Mount Hood. Dorothy and Hawkins married in 1960 and celebrated 58 years together. In 1961, Jennifer, the first of four daughters, was born, followed by Allison, Cynthia, and Maureen. As the family grew, we moved from Beaverton to Newburgh, where Dad built a very unique house on Parent Mountain, where we also had a Christmas tree farm out Tree Acres. All of us girls graduated from Newburgh High School, and so many of our friends found welcome at the Owl House and would find their pictures on Mom's huge photo wall in the kitchen nook. Annual Christmas tree cutting parties became favorite gatherings of friends old and new, and Mom was one of the best hostesses where people really felt welcomed and cared for. And we have so many memories at the beach house on the central Oregon coast. My mom was kind, loyal, and generous. And she expressed her many talents in service to friends and family, including calligraphy, sewing, quilting, gardening, hospitality. She also enjoyed good food, pottery, garage sales, and bowling, and those gave her opportunities for her to appreciate treasures and spend time with friends. She served as a deacon at church and was beloved for her hospitality, her banners, and beach retreats. Mom cheered on all us girls and later all her grandchildren at countless sporting events and concerts, and she was a true Beavers fan through thick and thin. While empty nesters, she and dad enjoyed traveling, both in their RV all over the United States and international travel all over the world. They then moved from their parent mountain home to the Friends View community in Newburgh, where friends for over many years also lived. Mom's patient and practical care was demonstrated in caring for dad after his quadruple bypass. And dad passed in 2018. Even in facing pancreatic cancer, mom's most frequent expressions were of thankfulness and of God's goodness. All four of us girls were privileged to be able to care for her in her last weeks here on earth. 
She left us knowing that she was in the care of her wonderful Savior. Dorothea survived by her brother Kay, her four daughters, 11 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Burial services were held in January for immediate family at Pleasant View Cemetery in Sherwood, Oregon. We're so thankful for mom and thankful to be able to celebrate her life. Our New Testament Gospel reading today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Hear now God's word to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dorothy Yoshitomi Ao was born in 1931 and passed away on December 29, 2020, 
at the age of 89 years young. I say young because Dorothy had such a youthful heart and she had boundless energy for most of her life. Dorothy Al made a great impression on me and this church. She was the heart and soul of the deacon's ministry and used her artistic talents to bless others. She was tireless in providing food and hospitality to our community during our weekly fellowship times and other special events that brought people together to combine the joy of food and faith. Dorothy became my very good friend. We visited regularly in her home and at church. I will remember her kindness and her positive spirit. She often spoke about her love for her family, her devotion to nursing, and her heart for our church ministry. Dorothy was a private person, but her smile always showed she cared deeply for others, and she was willing, when asked, to share about her own experiences. One of my favorite memories was when Dorothy took my wife Karen and I to the Japanese gardens, along with former interim pastor Dwayne Brutavold and his wife Carol. I think it was a way for Dorothy to show us love and appreciation, and also an opportunity to share her culture with us. We enjoyed together the beauty of the trees, flowers, plants, and Japanese architecture, and we later enjoyed a meal and good conversation. Dorothy was privileged to experience a long, full life with Hawk, her husband, and her wonderful children, Jennifer, Allison, Cynthia, and Maureen. She was also grateful for her many grandchildren. She enjoyed meaningful work and a beautiful home on Parrot Mountain, and the coast, but her upbringing included the challenge of Japanese internment and other hardships. She relied on a deep faith in God and the support of family and friends to fulfill her purpose in life. When Dorothy came to my office to share that she would need to begin hospice care, she was understandably sad, but she wanted me to know that she would be okay. She trusted God with her life, and she expressed how grateful she was for her blessed life. She was filled with gratitude for her family, our church, and her many years of treasured memories with family and friends. Dorothy was always one to demonstrate a heart of gratitude. In our scripture from John 14, Jesus says to his disciples that he goes to prepare a place for them. Jesus reminds his disciples that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Dorothy has gone home to heaven. She joins her loving husband, Hawk, and other loving family and friends. Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life for Dorothy on earth, and he has now welcomed her to a place of celebration. I imagine Dorothy decorating her new home in heaven with beautiful artwork. I bet her place in heaven is meticulous and that she is a wonderful hostess for whoever comes and visits her. I think if Dorothy were to give us any encouragement today, she would say to find comfort in knowing that she is in a wonderful place experiencing God's abundant love She would encourage us to trust in God and to use our gifts to serve others with humility, kindness, and creativity. Dorothy, we send you our love today. Thank you for loving this church and your family, friends, and patients so well through the years. We look forward to visiting your home in heaven and experiencing your hospitality and creative spirit once again. Will you please pray with me? Gracious and loving God, thank you for your servant Dorothy. May we find comfort in knowing that she has found her home in heaven. Give comfort to us, her friends and family, as we remember Dorothy and her impact on our lives with grateful hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. I have so many memories of mom, so many fond memories. 
One of them was a birthday parties at Woodford Park. She would always have us make the birthday party invitations. I remember one year we made elaborate invitations with the little alphabet noodles. It took forever. I also remember mom reading books to us. She read to us all the time. I remember singing in the car on road trips, um, especially the songs that could be sung in rounds, like White Coral Bells, um, and we would sing them over and over again. Of course, I also have many, many food memories. Mom would take us out to Peach Cove, where Bachan and Jichan grew all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Um, my favorite farm memories were in the summer, picking raspberries, husking corn in the field, and running them into the kitchen where the pot of boiling water was waiting, and biting into perfectly ripe peaches, and letting the juice run down our chins. Mm. I also remember making mochi for New Year's celebrations with all the aunties, uncles, and cousins. Um, mochi with the red bean on sweet filling was the best. We would have a giant spread of food on New Year's Day that included um, sushi and uh, California rolls, teriyaki chicken, chow mein, and all kinds of interesting tidbits. Also, um, mom um, led a huge Peking duck dinner which started with um, actually hatching out the ducklings. Um, cousin Karen um, remembered hatching ducklings in an incubator. Um, the ducklings were, of course, raised on further to adult stage at, out at Peach Cove. I'm not sure who did the butchering, but um, I remember spending a lot of time pulling out um, the feathers with tweezers. It was quite a job. And then there was all kinds of time, days, with the drying and roasting. But it made an unforgettable meal. Unfortunately, that was only a one, once-in-a-lifetime endeavor. I also remember um, a lot of um, plants and garden memories with Mom. Um, Mom always had a bunch of house plants. Um, many of those plants moved from Parrot Mountain down to their Newburgh duplex. Um, they have survived for decades and have been passed on to the next generation. A picture of mom rejuvenating the 50-year-old aloe plant at the beach house that had, had been a little start with the old beach house in the 60s. I love taking mom bouquets. She would always ask with great expectation, are these... A flowers all from your yard. Uh, many of them were, and many of them were from plants that she handed down to me. Uh, the Japanese irises were her favorite. Um, I have a picture here of Jichan's um, purple Japanese irises. I will miss mom through all the flower seasons. Dad and mom had a long stint of overseas travel which fueled all of our interest in travel. We recently tallied the number of states and countries that our family has, as a whole has traveled to. We tallied 49 states and 57 countries. I will remember mom as generous, kind, and non-judgmental. She would always bend and flex to make situations easier for others. She continually reminded us that she had had a good, long, blessed life. She was content. She knew she was continuing to walk with her wonderful Savior into eternity. I will miss her. Bacon. One of my memories of Dorothy is her stir-fried napa cabbage with bacon, or bacon added to any vegetable dish. In fact, in the Owl household, it was rare to have vegetables without bacon. What a blessing to have bacon in the vegetables. A little more than 24 years ago, my mother, also a Dorothy, died on Christmas Eve as our family sang the familiar Christmas Eve hymns. In her final weeks, my mom would say, 
don't make me a saint. Well, I'm sure Dorothy Owl would say the same thing. Dorothy would never want to draw attention to herself. In Philippians 2, it says, Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. I think this sums up Dorothy pretty well. You know, Dorothy would say, I have been so blessed. Yet she has blessed all of us with her humble, calm, caring, self-sacrificing manner. Well, Dorothy, you are a saint. You have truly been a blessing to all of us in so many ways. Oh, and thank you for the bacon vegetable stir fry. Playing outside at the Parent Mountain House one childhood summer, we grandkids stumbled upon a yellow jacket nest and found it interesting to watch the jackets coming and going. As you might have guessed, our viewing experience quickly became an uncontrolled event. Keen Eye, Marine and Eric's husky, noticed that he wasn't the center of our attention. Before anyone could stop him, Keen Eye got his snout into the nest up to his eyes. Immediately, we all, including Kenai, ran into the open garage, plucking yellow jackets from our ears, hair, and clothes, and stumbled inside, shut the door. Grandma, hearing the screams, asked what was wrong. After a few moments of us talking all at once, she caught on that many of us were sporting stings. Well, are you all okay? I think so. Did you step on the nest accidentally? No, Kenai stuck his face in it. So where is he? Out in the garage where we left him. None of us had considered what had happened to Kenai. Besides, wasn't it his fault? After double-checking that we'd only be somewhat swollen, Grandma went out into the garage and spent 30 minutes hand-picking what must have been hundreds of yellow jackets from that dog's fur. If this is the quality of care Grandma gave to the dogs, you can only imagine how deep her love and care was for all of us grandchildren. Grandma was always patient, kind, and humble, and she showed her love through her actions and quality time. One of my key memories of Grandma's love and patience when I was younger was when I had been running down the Parent Mountain driveway, slick with fresh rain, and I took the corner too sharp and ended up sliding knee-first into Grandma's corner of cacti. Even as I was processing the jobs and pokes of many cactus needles in my knee, I remember being scared to go to her because... What if these are her favorite plants? Did I just destroy them? What's she going to think? In between sobs of explaining to her what had happened, she just patiently sat me down on the bench, got some tweezers, and plucked each and every one of them out. All patched up, she didn't say much after that. But the next time I was back at the house, I noticed none of the cacti were there, and she had cleared that corner out. It's said that actions are worth a thousand words, and from crafting with us grandkids during our annual Owl Cousins beach weeks, to playing board games with us, and winning even though she'd sworn she'd never played before, to patiently patching me up and valuing her granddaughter's knee over her favorite cactus, I know we were all loved by her very much, and I hope to be just as kind, thoughtful, and loving as she always was. Thanks, Mom, for the part of you that rubbed off on me, like your love of arts, crafts, sewing, agate collecting, and animals. You were pretty great letting me have a cat, a guinea pig, rabbits, and parakeets. In fact, you even helped me build the bird cage out of wire mesh. Thank you for being so patient those times I would be working on a sewing project, make a mistake, and become frustrated. You would calmly say, maybe it's time to put that away for now and come back to it later, which usually made me more frustrated. Thanks, Mom, for making me do things I didn't really enjoy, like working out in the yard, practicing piano, doing dishes, cleaning the cat box, and making my bed. I eventually learned to like the satisfaction of working hard, to appreciate gardening, sitting down and playing the piano for fun, and creating a comfortable home environment. Thanks, Mom, for the gatherings around the dining table at Parrot Mountain with food, family, and friends. You were the hostess who always welcomed people into our home with a smile and a place at the table. Rob and I designed our house to accommodate that table, and we tell its story when we have gatherings in our home. I hope I am as warm and welcoming as you were. Thanks, Mom, for sharing the unpleasant experiences in your life. When your family was relocated 
to Idaho during the war. You told stories of leaving home and friends, the terrible living conditions, and the difficulty of returning home and being treated with disdain and unkindness. Yet you turned the other cheek and never spoke of your country's injustice. Instead, you would get choked up with gratitude when singing the Star-Spangled Banner. Thanks, Mom, for your Japanese gambate attitude of perseverance, enduring without being disagreeable, and cheerfully approaching life's ups and downs with appreciation. Even as you suffered from the effects of aging and cancer, you kept a smile on your face and never complained. Thanks, Mom, for your joyful example of serving others and giving freely of your time and talents to your family, neighbors, and church. Thank you for the opportunity and blessing it was to serve and care for you, giving you foot rubs and even polishing your toenails for the first time. Thanks, Mom, for your humble, quiet faith in Jesus Christ. Celebrating his birth at Christmas was your favorite time, and you always made it special. When Rob and I lived away and couldn't come cut our own tree, you mailed them to us, even when we lived in Japan. You also had a way of finding the best white elephant gifts. Early in December, you asked me when Christmas was. I told you it was three weeks away. On Christmas morning, I wished you Merry Christmas and asked, Did you want to make it to Christmas, Mom? You nodded your head. This final Christmas with you will be a cherished memory. As you said the last words I heard you utter, laughing and clapping your hands, joyfully exclaiming, Wonderful Savior. Thanks, Mom, for abundantly blessing my life as my mom, grandma to our boys, and great-grandma to our granddaughters. I love you and will miss you until we see each other again. Dorothy Yao is no extremist, but when I see Dorothy's face in my mind, I'm struck by two extremely different images. The first is one of a patient demeanor, almost a stoical seriousness, probably the result of her upbringing in tough circumstances at a difficult time by somber Japanese parents. She has a perfect poker face, always comfortable in her own thoughts, only revealing them if you pressed her, and even then, reservedly. My mother-in-law is content just listening, especially in group settings, and she possesses an admirable and sometimes frustrating refusal to take sides or show favoritism. This comfort with aloneness was on display at home, as, as she would focus on Things like preparing a meal for the family, or as she'd be working late in the night on someone else's project, or maybe while engrossed in iPad play, or or just concentrating on puzzles or an assortment of other games. Her lips were usually still, but you knew her mind and desire to serve was busy. Then the, the other image of Dorothy, the other extreme, is of a woman lost and found in laughter. Not just a a polite smile, we're talking a bent over, can't talk till she finds her breath, fun to watch display of joy. Her eyes have a twinkle as if she knows they can communicate her thoughts better than her words can. Those eyes, they seem to say, thank you for being a part of my life, for making me laugh, for vocalizing what I either wish I could have said or what I wanted to say but didn't dare. Dorothy's tilt of the head and wide smile are her way of saying to those in her company, I love you for you. I will always be grateful for the earthly tasks that define Dorothy, the the gracious two-day Christmas tree cutting parties, the simple enjoyment she got from those dopey white elephant gifts, the comprehensive Christmas cards she would write and Hawk would dutifully stuff, the wonderful family dinners around the circular dining table on the Chinese china, And, of course, the garage sale shopping that she did for trinkets and and probably next year's white elephant gifts. But mostly, I am grateful that I had the best mother-in-law in in the world. How Dorothy, that the intern camp victim, would grow up to become a nurse for others, a devoted follower and servant of Christ, a night owl supportive spouse of an entrepreneur, the mother and mentor of the precious person I would meet in high school and later marry, and the accepting and patient grandmother who cherished all of her descendants as much as, well, as much as any of the above. Nanachan, 
あなたはアマリアを表現しませんでした。そしてそれはあなたを遠わくさせるかもしれませんが、私はあなたを愛しています。そして私はあのアリスの贈り物に感謝します。私たちが家族として楽しく一緒に暮らせる次の人生で平和と理解を持って再びあなたと一緒にいるのが待ちきれません。I have lots of memories of Grandma. Some that stick out are selling Christmas trees for our tree acres, getting together as family on Christmas Day, Grandma driving really slowly in her red minivan, exploring the ponds around her house, climbing the tree forts that were up on her property, Grandma coming to my soccer games in high school. And then getting in trouble at the beach for throwing ice and breaking a pool stick. One memory that has stuck out the most for me was when Grandma and Grandpa visited me on my church mission in Arizona. We weren't supposed to see family, but I got permission to spend the morning with them. We were able to have breakfast together, and then I was able to show them around the temple. As Grandpa drove us back to my apartment, In the RV, I was able to share more of my thoughts and testimony about the Savior with Grandma in the back seat. It was great to be able to connect in a way that we hadn't up to that point in our lives. I also appreciate the monetary kindness Grandma and Grandpa provided us. We have used the gifts to help pay for the down payment on our first house and have started saving for our girls. College fund. It was sometime either in middle school or high school, Grandma and I started having an inside joke where we would collect sugar from all the restaurants we would go to and then we would give them to each other during Christmas time. Even when I was in my adult life, Grandma would continue to send sugar packets for me for Christmas. I can also remember Grandma saying, Oh, Austin, whenever I would see her for the first time in a while after I had moved away. She would always then give me a hug. I believe the last time I saw her was when I surprised her and stopped by her house on the way to the beach house with my wife and girls. Though we couldn't embrace because of COVID, she said hi to our girls through the glass window of the car. Grandma has been an amazing grandparent, and I hope to、uh, be as good of a grandparent to, to my grandchildren as well. Every time I saw Grandma, she would greet me with a big smile and a big hug, and she seemed like she was always happy to see me. A lot of my memories revolve around being babysat by Grandma on their、uh, Parrot Mountain property. I just remember. Being allowed to run around the property and build forts, play tennis, sneaking into、uh, her snack stash and stealing candy.、Um, Grandma was always very interested in my interests.、Uh, she allowed me to paintball up on her property, and she's always talking to me about、um, what I was currently doing in soccer or my. Ski trips or hunting trips. She always seemed very interested and was always willing to hear about me. Grandma is probably the best listener I know. So, a couple of memories I have of Grandma. I always remember、uh, when we were younger sneaking around Grandma to get into the kitchen in the Parry Mountain house to get to the corner snack cabinet. And、uh, I remember my favorite snack in there、uh, were the green, rock hard, probably 40 year old licorice.、Uh, those were always really good. And、um, another one in the Paramount o n house was when I'd play marbles downstairs, and she would come down and、um, play those marbles with me and, and race them with me.、Um, I even remember sometimes she would、uh, sneak me some treats or desserts before dinner. 
uh, when I would ask and when I was being good, she would give me some. Um, but I think mostly the big one is just um, her kindness and her loving nature. Um, she was always a peacekeeper, uh, especially when she was kind of babysitting me and Brennan and Austin. She would always kind of be the peacekeeper between us. Um, I think that's one thing I'll remember is just her peace that she always had about her and her kindness and her love. And I think it's trying, it's something that I try to try to emulate and one of the, one of the qualities that I remember of her. There are so many positive things that come to mind when I think of mom, but I think the thing that stands out the most is that she always put others before herself. She was a hundred percent caregiver, was loving and kind. Not only did I experience this growing up, but she also extended this warmth and love to our kids. Mom was a wonderful cook and fed us well. When serving herself, she always chose the white pieces of chicken. I didn't realize until later that Mom didn't prefer the white pieces. She just reserved the favorite pieces, the dark and tender ones, for the rest of us. Even though that was a small gesture, it mirrored how she treated others in all she did. She always put the needs of others first. Mom gave of her time and talents to her family and community. She loved serving as an elder at church. She was humble. She never wanted attention or recognition for the things that she did. Mom was extremely creative and resourceful. Growing up, we had a huge amount of storage, chocked full of every sewing or craft supply imaginable. Fabric, notions, yarn, string, crochet and knitting needles, paint, brushes, scissors, glue, clay, paper, canvas, and the list goes on. She could fix things. I remember her tearing apart appliances, large and small, or mending clothes or toys. She was an expert seamstress. She made countless prom, wedding, and bridesmaids dresses, and sewed many matching outfits for her granddaughters, Hala and Emily. Christmas was mom's favorite holiday. She made many Christmas decorations that adorned our house. One cannot count the numerous banners, posters, and flyers that she created over the years. Mom loved God and expressed her thankfulness regularly, especially in the midst of cancer. She and Dad came up with our family meal prayer that we still say to this day, Bless this food, dear Lord, and help us to recognize and be thankful for all thy daily blessings. Amen. On Christmas morning, just a few days before she passed, and this was during a period of time when she was not opening her eyes or responding much, some of the last words we heard her say was, wonderful savior, along with laughing and clapping of her hands. She had joy for the Lord till the very end. Mom was a teacher in such a quiet and patient way, allowing us to make mistakes and learn from them, but guiding us when needed. Some familiar phrases she and dad imparted to me was, the world doesn't revolve around you or think of others. Did you look past your nose or be patient, diligent, independent, and it takes all kinds to make the world go round, or have patience and love for others, especially those who are different than you. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 sums up mom to me. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. There is so much that I miss about mom. As I was thinking about what to share about Dorothy, I knew many people would share stories of how humble and kind she was. So I thought I would share something different. With this story, I will try to show a rare side of Dorothy that perhaps only a young, dumb son-in-law could get out of her. In July of 1994, the Owl family was on vacation at Silver Lake Resort along the Spirit Lake Highway on the way up to Mount St. Helens. For one of our day trips, we decided to go to the Johnstone Ridge Observatory where we hiked up to view Spirit Lake. The eruption in 1980 had left this hill completely bare, except for several dead and bent over trees. While I was wandering around, I found a tree protruding sideways out of the hill. 
From above, the tree looked like it was hanging out over the lake, hundreds of feet below. But as I got closer, it was just an optical illusion, and the tree was only about five feet above the ground. That's when I had a great idea. Well, I thought it was great. I jumped up on the tree and waited for a victim. As Dorothy approached me, I yelled out, Dorothy, hey, take a picture of me. She immediately gasped and yelled, Alan, you get down from there right now. I said, but take a picture first. And I started to stand up and then pretended to accidentally fall off the tree. Dorothy screamed, Alan! I jumped up from the ground and told her I was fine. She glared at me, her eyes burning a hole through my head. Then she turned and stomped away, going all the way back down to the car. She did not talk to me the rest of the day. I had no idea how powerful the silent treatment would be. She eventually forgave me, but she never forgot it. And I never did either, because at that moment, I knew she loved me, and it was great. I also learned her silence wasn't just her expressing anger, but also how she persevered through difficult moments. Over the years, I watched Dorothy embrace and tackle all sorts of hardships, and she always did it with grace and dignity. She taught me the Japanese word gambate, which translates to do your best, but also means to stoically endure whatever comes your way. Patience, endurance, and self-control, that is how she faced her cancer and her death. It's a lesson she taught her daughters, and I watched them exhibit it while they cared for her this past year. And I'm forever thankful she taught it to me, too. There are so many countless memories that I have of Grandma. She and Grandpa were the most generous people I knew, and examples of that generosity towards me and others are endless. When I think of her, I think of her servant's heart, always putting the needs of others ahead of her own. I really cherish the moments where she taught me things and shared her love of food and art with me. Anyone who knows me is aware of my love of sushi, and that comes directly from Grandma. It was really meaningful and exciting to share her Japanese culture with me. Once while I was at college, I got a letter from her in the mail. She had sent personalized return address labels with name, my name and address at school because she found the sushi clip art and thought of me. She also taught me how to make an origami crane, and I have since been able to teach my students the same way I was taught. One of my favorite funny memories of Grandma was quite a few years ago when the whole family was at the beach together. Grandma was playing Scrabble on her iPad, and Austin asked her if she had ever heard of Words with Friends. When she hadn't, Austin, Emily, and I explained how she could play against us through the app. She proceeded to say, Well, I'm not sure. I can play some four-letter words. I can now say from experience of losing to her the majority of the time that Grandma definitely played some of the four-letter words if it got her more of the points. One thing I remember about Grandma was her home cooking. At large family potlucks, the food she brought was always gone by the end of the night. Well, actually, it'd be gone before some people had their seconds. Um, other times, we'd hop down to Newburgh for a midweek dinner with Grandma and Grandpa. Something that sticks with me is that Grandma always made white rice. And this is a big deal when I was a kid. Because compared to the brown rice my mom always used to make, Grandma's white rice felt like a whole other universe. Even my mom eventually stopped making brown rice at home. To this day, I only eat white rice, but of course when I cook it, it just is not the same as grandma's white rice. While we're on the topic of food stories, I recall being a young child up at Parent Mountain with grandma and my brother Micah. When it was snack time, I had the choice between Kellogg's fruit snacks, chips from a box of 50 assorted flavors, or single serving size cereal boxes. For me, the fruit snacks or the chips were always a solid choice, but sometimes I'd feel a bit more adventurous and choose a cereal. As I was bo opening a box of, I think it was Apple Jacks or something, I was surprised to find that an ant colony had taken over my cereal. Little ants were just crawling around in there after I opened the bag. All I did was say, Grandma, and she'd silently locate a fresher box. So for me, looking back on these memories, I've realized that Grandma always portrayed a humble confidence in everything she did. She never slacked on quality, and she always made sure we were cared for in the most humble way. And I still felt this care even if I found ants in my cereal box. My favorite memories of Grandma was uh, seeing her at all my soccer games and basketball games in high school. Uh, she, always, she always tried to make it to all my games, even the away ones that were really far away. Um, and I always loved seeing her in the stands watching. Uh, it really showed how much she cared about me and you know all, all the rest of her grandkids 
Um, and I always enjoyed, after the game, I'd always go up and talk to her. And, and a lot of the times we'd go out to dinner after and she'd buy us dinner. And I just really enjoy those memories and they have a special place in my heart. One of the stories I tell most often about mom is when I was in grade school, she let me invite my friends to come to our house after school and she taught us arts and crafts. I remember things like pottery and crochet and calligraphy. I also remember that she had each of us bring an old button-up shirt of our dad's to wear as a paint smock so we'd keep our clothes clean. I didn't really appreciate then how amazingly talented she was artistically and creatively, and even more how kind and patient and unselfish she was to teach us girls. But now I say to people, how cool was my mom to do that? She passed on some of that love of art to me. Some of my favorite memories with my girls has been being an art docent for their classes. It's been a really fun way to serve their teachers and get to know their classmates and get to make art with them. Thanks, Mom. Mom was not only creative, she was also amazingly kind and patient. I remember when Cristiano was about two years old, we were at their house on Parrot Mountain. Mom got out painting things for Christiana, huge piece of butcher paper on the kitchen floor, and had put finger paints in a muffin tin just right for her little hands. And we said, oh, isn't Grandma kind? She's helping you. Sometime later, Mom was helping Christiana decorate Easter eggs with stickers and markers. She was sitting on Grandma's lap. And we asked, wow, what are you doing? And Christiana replied, Grandma is kinding me. It was perfectly descriptive to make kind into a verb because that's what mom did all the time. And I love that's what our girls experienced about grandma. One of my favorite memories with Dorothy, and I've told this story a lot of times, um, when Maureen and I were getting married, and you know I'm marrying the youngest daughter and I just wanted to make sure Dorothy was doing okay and uh, so I I don't know if it was at our wedding rehearsal or about that time or maybe a few weeks before and I said Dorothy are you gonna be okay you know you're gonna be an empty nester now your last daughter's leaving are you guys gonna be okay and Dorothy got a big smile and she got and she said oh Eric I had I love being a I love being a mom. I had a life before children and I'm going to have a life after children too. We're going to be fine. And I just appreciated her healthy view of things. Um she had a, she just knew how to live. She knew how to live healthy. She had healthy perspectives. And I really uh, appreciate her and I miss her. Okay, tell the story about um the bath at Grandma's house. Oh, the bath at Grandma's house. Okay. So while we were over there, we decided to take a bath because there's a lots of nice jets and she had bubbles. So I, I think this, this was their duplex and we were like staying there right before we like headed to the beach, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we just turned the water on and we left it running because we we're like, wow, wow, the bubbles are going so it's high. Just, there's just so much and bubbles. And we just kept dumping soap in. We kept dumping soap in. And then more oh. soap and then more soap. More and then, we're, and then eventually we're sitting in there like, wow, all I can see is bubbles. <laughs> Maybe this is a and problem. And then we hear grandma, oh, <laughs> oh, and we run in and literally... See this wall of we could not see you two at all, <laughs> we were and she thought it was somewhere. really cool to turn on the jet so it made more bubbles. It and, spilled over the top. And Dad there. said, "Um, oh, this is like a this is like a an episode of I Love Lucy." Oh, no. <laughs> crazy. But you were just giggling. We and thought giggling. it was delightful. Best time in the world, bubble bath at Grandma's <laughs> and house. Then once you know, we got out. We just like sat and watched Anastasia in the next room or something <laughs> on um. What was it on uh, the D on the, the VHS? The VHS. We just watched like on the stage of Prince of Egypt yeah. or something. Oh, you guys like cleaned it up or something. Like you got it. Yeah, that was today's been great. <laughs> and you were like, how old? I don't know, a little, because um, I must have been like maybe six, four and six, four and yeah. six, maybe, maybe yeah. younger. Uh -huh. Yeah. So funny. <laughs>
When I came to Oregon in 1956 and started my first job as an RN, Yosh became an instant friend. From the beginning, she was always there for me. Hawk and Jim became close friends also. We had many a ski trips and camping trips together. There was no question they both were asked to be in our wedding. That led to more family trips, which led to purchasing a beach cabin. What a great way to continue that friendship. We have never been sorry for doing that. Yosh had so many talents. I loved her calligraphy, and she could sew anything. I sure treasure her homemade gifts. The nameplates, Christmas banners, etc. Jim's Lama. Simple words cannot express my feelings towards Yosh. She was always so pleasant and caring, and she made the best salmon I've ever had. She was an excellent cook. Our goodbye at Dayton Park ended with a hug and a kiss. I wish I had shown that affection the previous 62 years. There is an empty spot in my heart that she no longer fills. I miss her. I met Yosh in the fall of 1949 at Oregon State. We were registering for the fall term nursing program. It was friendship at first sight. We had five terms at Oregon State, then we came to Portland to nursing school. Here we struggled for two plus years. After graduation, I flew off to work at Salem General Hospital, and Yosh stayed in Portland. I hated it, so after about six months, I came back to Portland to work at County Hospital. Again, Yosh and I were roommates. Yosh was without a doubt one of the sweetest people I've ever known, always kind and very helpful. She was very talented artistically and a beautiful seamstress. For example, my oldest daughter Beth was getting married and wanted to make her own wedding dress. This proved to be a difficult task. Yosh said, would you like some help? And Yosh proceeded to help Beth make the dress. Thinking of a world without Yosh is extremely difficult. I do have all those years of wonderful memories. Yosh is no longer here, but she has a very firm spot in my heart. We were deacons at church together for decades. Dorothy volunteered on so many church committees. She helped with sprucing up the building, cleaning, landscaping, rummage sales, and teas. I remember an international dinner she cooked. It was a beautiful Japanese meal that had some kind of spice in it that made me throw up. I loved going to her beach house and doing puzzles. It was a privilege to know Dorothy and call her my friend. I always told Dorothy she was a yes man at church. Not that she agreed with everything, but that when there was a job that needed doing, she always said yes. And she always did more than her share. Posters, decorating, centerpieces... Helping set up Fellowship Hall for a special occasion, she was always there. Her artistic talent was quite amazing. Dorothy was always in the kitchen after Sunday fellowship time. And when we were done, there was a bag of towels that needed washing. She and I always had a friendly tussle about who was going to take it home. I was always pleased when I outfoxed her and managed to be the winner. I should mention, too, that I noticed all of a sudden it seemed Dorothy was doing every fellowship refreshment every Sunday after church. Someone said that she knew she was not going to be able to do it in the time ahead, so wanted to do all for a month. It was to make up for what she was not going to be able to do. What a fine, fine person she was. My heart still aches that when we are able to get back to real church, she won't be there. Friends, we now come to a time where we will say the Lord's Prayer together. And as we prepare our hearts to say the Lord's Prayer, I will offer a prayer as well. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the amazing life of your servant, servant Dorothy Owl. Thank you for her creativity and generosity. We are so grateful for the way she demonstrated your love to the world as a nurse, a wife, a mother, grandmother, a friend, and a deacon. May she find rest in your love as she is reunited with Hawk and other loved ones in heaven. With gratitude in our hearts for Dorothy's life and trusting in the grace and love of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, at this point in our service, we will have the prayer of committal and commendation. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, Dorothy Au, and we commit her to God, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Amen. Friends, this time, please receive the benediction. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. And now we will sing together the blessing song. This is a song that Dorothy loved, and we sing it every week at our church. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance and give you peace both now and forevermore, now and forevermore, and be gracious unto you, and be gracious unto you. God bless you. Thank you for being here.
Thank you.